Hey, good morning, Roman. How are you doing? Thank you. Uh, Kathy is not with us today. You oh. oh, yes. No, she's fine. She's fine. Uh, you might know there's renovation in her house. And the renovation started last week. And it was supposed to be a very simple one-week renovation. Everything should be fine by now. And this and that. And guess what? Nothing is finished. She's in the dirt, dust sound, noise, heat, humidity, and in Arizona in Phoenix, all together. <laughs> so we have uh, today um, a topic, which will be part of a, oh yeah, I show it like this, et voila. So it's part of a, I think we'll have like another, maybe two or three more show on, on the topic of communication between human and dog. And the first day today of that topic, we're going to look at dogs. And then with the expertise of Roman, we'll publish a white paper on the topic. And I have a copy of the white paper. Uh, we're trying to understand what the dog is trying to say to us when the dog make or take some posture, attitude, behavior, and so on and so forth. So I have some picture to share to you. And I will ask Roman in one word, what you think the expression of this, uh, the expression of this dog might mean. Avoidance. Avoidance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Security. Just one we word. Just one word. Have, yeah, we have. Just one word. Just one word. Okay, this yeah. one. Walking away from it. Okay, this one. Let's play. Okay. <laughs> more. <laughs> more. Okay, more. more. This guy. Oh, that's. <sighs> okay. Um... It's, it's not a word it's it's a it's I, an emotional picture right. so let's say let's call it sad sad that's a word it's not the word disapp disappointment i would disappointment is better okay focused focus okay great thank you for your comment and so, <laughs> let, let, let me clarify because i can see sure like now it's your time like, go ahead um, dogs don't communicate just in words. They're, they're communicating with emotional expressions. So um, we, we see a body language and we look at the face, but the, the dog's way of communicating offers different, different information channels, the tail, the head, the fur, the legs, the body posture, the overall body posture and the position in regards to whoever person dog or situation and that all thing is kind of like a snapshot of an emotional state in regards to a situation mm -hmm. so dogs basically try to convey visual information that is visual if it's visually acceptable for others there is audio information there is emotional information that needs to be and there's also a, a displacement like the the location the dog is is also a language mm -hmm. so a dog who sits on top of the couch is facing the window tails up and focus outside the window that is an emotional expression and that says a lot of the situation the dog and its disposition to the situation so we have to see that as a whole picture okay and in that regard you you publish a white paper and uh, it's is that available to the public the white paper um, i'm i'm working on some details because okay. we have lack on, on pictures okay like I, i'm looking for pictures that show a specific um set of body languages okay. that we can identify as a particular expression okay um i feel yeah, it's 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 a white paper that is not finished painting yet. <laughs> okay, so it's it's a we have a an avant premiere. We we have right, a right, right. 
And uh, if I share the screen with you in our audience, this is part of the uh, of your white paper I'm referring to. And in the white paper, I, I hope you'll publish it uh, very soon. Uh, it, it's very, very uh, educative. It, it, it's open, uh, open my eyes. I'm not an expert on dog. You, everybody knows that. Um, I have no pretension about knowing dogs. This opened my eyes wide open and confirmed some of my instinct be uh, understanding and correct a lot of wrong understanding about dogs. In your white paper, you, have, you, you talk about 10 different uh, attitude of dogs. And this is, I would say, this is number one uh, that you publish. And I will let you talk about your own work and talk about this. And we'll scroll down as you request for the other aspect of it. Well, I would say that there are not 10 attitudes. I would say there are, you know, a couple of basic ideas. The first one is the visual signals that a dog has to express himself. Mm -hmm. um, dogs try to avoid conflicts. That's the main route. So in the back, in the old times, we believe that dogs are aggressive and all they do is to calm others down. But my mm -hmm. belief is the dogs try to communicate how they feel it's an it's an emotional expression this is how i feel they're very authentic about their emotions and all they do is this is how i feel this is how you should see me as and that's why i'm showing it to you and then you have to take your own judgment what do you do with what i'm showing you if you proceed further to me then i will have choices and that comes down to what the dog understands and, and shows about his choices and then the other part would be um, things that a dog doesn't share with the public, it shares with his own mates, mm -hmm. right? So we have an expression that goes forward towards the other side and expressions that are coming are directed towards back, like whatever is behind me. Um, then we see that dogs have basically warning or fear signals, they have mm -hmm. inviting signals, they have influencing signals and they have calming signals. It's not always calming. A classic example, we see dogs making a posture like this dog here, the, the Border Collie, that shows a specific behavior, a predatory behavior towards the sheep. And the sheep goes into an emotional response, like a yeah. fear response. Mm -hmm. And he creates an emotional pressure by fo focusing on the, on the prey body. So the prey avoids that. So it's basically a... I'm intending to hurt you if you're not doing what I want you to do. Okay. So we have this emotional pressure communication. Yeah. I the dog pretends to be a predator and triggers the the other animal to feel like a prey, tries to avoid the conflict. Mm -hmm. In this and, case, you have the dog with the ears sticking out, very straight. Is alert. That, this is part of the alert. This is part of the communication. In, in yes. this case, we assume he's uh, working with sheep, and the sheep, by saying these sticking out, you say, okay, this, right. this guy means business. Right. Well, he's pretending to be a wolf. Right. We okay. have the genetic information coming over the generations of sheep for many million generations. Right. And that generation is what the dog tries to poke okay. into or touch into. Uh, very clever. We have, we have another image. Let's see, and another expression. <laughs> this is a dog turning the head away. I I tried to pick the picture. Okay, I'll keep it the way it is uh, on the document. I'm not yeah. going to make it larger. This so it's funny. This husky. Um, I met this husky in a in a, in my wedding reception actually. Okay. Um, and um, I went around the corner, and all these puppies basically territorial. So he jumps on the fence and tell and tells me, I don't want you to come in here. I avoid your situations. I'm just telling you I'm holding space for that rule. And it was very interesting because as soon as this puppy ran out, his adult brother went in. <laughs> so it was a clear 
message to me that this young guy will be very territorial in the future. He's mm -hmm. very confident about what he wants to express. Okay. So this guy says, this is my place. Stay away from me. Don't come if you're not invited. Yeah. Is there a way to interact with a dog like that and get acquainted to the point where we're invited in this environment? Well, first of all, we have to, to pay respect on his job because that dog believes he has a job. Yeah. Behaving like a predator in exchange to that disposition is mm. definitely not a smart action because okay. what we create is more aggression on the other dog's side because he has to defend himself there. Okay. Now, that dog basically <clears throat> avoids his head, and that's why it's very difficult when we want to take pictures of dogs. So we take the camera and put them in front of the dog's face. That's basically invading the dog's personal right. space, and that's why the dog will turn the head away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because like, oh, he doesn't like pictures. No, he, he doesn't like you approaching him so, so right. close into his face. Yeah. Okay, and another one is interesting, too. Uh, let's see. Well, Go ahead. So um, that picture um, that we, set, we see kind of in the center, uh, that is a dog who had a severe trauma. And so what happens is as I approach his neck, he's turning his back, basically trying to avoid that from happening, try to protect his neck. Dogs don't have the ability to put their legs, their legs over their head, but right. what he can do is reach out and snap at the aggressor. So mm -hmm. my hand reaching out to the dog's neck that is not because of me, it's because of the way he was treated before that. That was pretty much the first beginning I he came into treatment. Mm -hmm. um, that he has a PTSD response. So that behavior is not a behavior to communicate with me, is basically to keep himself safe no matter what. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And many people get bitten by dogs who they approach, stranger dogs or fosters, who try to manipulate the dog by grabbing him by the collar because they feel that's the only way to help the dog and they get hurt. Yeah. Uh, I want to say a word to the audience is uh, I have to screen and what I'm showing on the broadcast is on the screen. So I look like away from you, but I'm manipulating my second screen. This is why it's look a little bit bizarre, but please forgive me about that. And it's just technology at this moment. And here's another illustration from your white paper. And this is very expressive. Let me bring this information here. Here we are. Yeah, um, that is definitely a dog who is free roaming for a very long time. Um, so he is basically tries to stay off the radar as much as possible, try to hide his head down. Mm -hmm. However, his, his real legs are propulsion, and his front legs is the steering wheel, considering. Yeah. Uh, and so what he tries to do is trying to stay under the radar, but ready to launch and run away. And we can also see at his tail, he's stuck and underneath. So that is a totally unsafe, insecure dog. He okay. tried to create himself as an egg. You see that picture. And he, he is... I feel in that picture the dog is trying to eat something or he has food there. Um, so he's guarding his safe place but trying ready to leave. So okay. that picture is definitely something you should avoid going closer. It's, it's okay. a no-no. So in this situation, uh, there's three things I notice. The position of the head, the position of the front paw, and the position of the hips or the, la the, the back paw. They are not lined up. Correct. It's like a curve, and the eyes seems to go towards maybe the, the person taking the picture or somewhere in between. I don't know. There might be somebody on the left side of the camera. But this is not a, a, a situation, an expression of, oh, you're welcome. Come on. I'll be I'll yeah, back yeah. to you. It um, can be. Yeah, go ahead. This picture is usually seen by people who rescue dogs. Uh, captured dogs that are, you know, um, left outside or, you know, they, they they ran off for a couple of months. So this is a dog definitely has been a couple of months out there um, trying to get him captured. So that's a capture situation that people want to capture that dog okay. and, you know, get him back into the rescue system. Okay. If we approach a dog in, in a configuration like that, 
there's a risk of aggression from the dog or well definitely the dog tries to avoid the situation so okay. he will be territorial if he doesn't have a way out if he's cornered okay. okay so yeah it's a high risk situation i would not um approach in that picture definitely not it's kind of like stay away from me i'm worried about all the situation about my safety about my food about my location okay it's not a writing picture it's not a play ball or any way invitation no okay great i appreciate this uh, insight and explanation there there's another uh, fifth uh i like this this the explanation whoops where is the picture uh picture might be on the right here somewhere let's be yeah, scroll out a little bit again. yeah let's refine the picture um, this is six five is somewhere hold on a second oh here it is it was next to the big guy oh. <laughs> this is nose licking well nose, nose licking is a very interesting idea it's actually one of the signals that have a variety of of in, 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 in informations and it depends on location and who is attentive um, I would compare it with probing so what the dog does basically is knows this is information source to get information in and we see a, a, a contrast between a black nose and a red tongue and what happens is we see that if let's take my black phone for example and all of a sudden you have this red hand coming it's basically like a morse signal right mm -hmm. and it's it's visual towards the front it's not visual towards the back so okay. it doesn't it's not related to the back of the dog it's related to the front of the dog um my first um expression that shows up most of the times is i need more information another reason for that could be i have too much information and i need to slow down it's a message of information that comes into the dog too much or not enough or too fast okay or need more so i feel um if we see a dog who shows that signal we have to pay attention what it is about for example you ask your dog to sit and your dog licks his nose that would mean i'm processing i'm processing the information you gave me and the dog is about to sit or not if you say that and a dog licks his nose and it doesn't follow through, meaning is that information is not enough for me. I'm not sure what you want. Make sense? Think now, if another dog approaches and we're on the leash and the dog shows that expression towards the other side, mm -hmm. meaning he's not sure what's happening in the front of him and he wants more information. That mm -hmm. could be directed towards you who is next to him who can see that message, but likely it's directed towards the other dog telling him, is coming in too intense or too fast or doesn't give him clear information what that meeting is about wow. so that expects a feedback on mm -hmm. the from the other side slowing down would be a feedback you know showing a different body posture would be a feedback okay very nice so the next one is this guy here <laughs> I skipped the text, but you're you're the living text here. <laughs> yeah. So snout poking with the nose is is to induce an event. The dog with poking has the intentions to make it happen. So we see dogs who approach people and poke their hands or poke on the side is they want them to do something. Mm -hmm. Not sure what, but do something is basically the meaning. It's a it's a trigger. They try to trigger it. Um, we see that dog to dog interactions, if the dog doesn't really want to engage, the dog will go and poke him, do yeah. something. Um, sometimes they poke on the ear, like intent something, or post on the back, move, do something. Um, and the dog can respond accordingly by engaging or disengaging. So if one dog would poke me and I would like not him to engage, I would basically do a avoid a body language to tell the dog I don't want to but I have to walk away from it I cannot just stay there because that makes it territorial okay the way we respond is the meaning that a dog will take as an answer to go mm -hmm. to the next level whether he pushes me more he eventually yeah. jumps on me 
or he walks away understanding that I don't want to engage. If you walk in a house and a dog poke you when you walk in, you're, you just said that you need to stay away or you, you want to disengage. The, the, a dog which it's happened to me. I walk in my sister house and the dog, one of our dog poked me Boom. and instantly it's a, like it's a, it's a controlling behavior. It tries to influence you in any way. Yeah. Do, is he looking for something from me? Like give him a caress or touching that's it? A, that's a good point. The dog has certain expectations and he wants you to fulfill that expectation. So that's why he's talking to you. Do your part. In other words, okay. So um, usually, what your your sister does or whoever you visit is the dog has expectation he gets a reward or something, okay. And he didn't get the reward from there, so he wants it from you. Mm -hmm. I would say it's part of his ritual of his greeting ritual that you weren't compliant. Oh, okay. Great. Let's see the next one. It's it's too, all of that is very fascinating. Yeah, if I remember right, it should be around um, 46, 50 signals that I worked on so far. Okay. So that's few of them. Yeah. Uh, did we miss one here? No, we have the dog nose up sniffing, going like this. Uh, okay. Okay. Nose up. This picture goes with nose up sniffing right yeah, right okay. so what the dog does um is the picture i kind of we've moved around um basically when the dog has his nose up and sniffs he needs more information he wants to engage so okay. that is my first investigation if i if i interact with dogs the first thing that's going to happen if the dog sniffs in the air he is able to process what's happening but that's an important factor because okay. even if the dog licks his nose, he may not be able to process the information. So either he is excited too high and uh -huh. so he cannot perceive the information. However, if the dog shows intention and starts sniffing, it's because he wants to gain more sniff information. That will be a scent dog. Okay. A dog who stares at you and follows you, that would be a sight dog. So we see it depends on the dog's breed traits, which language he will use. To convey the same information i want to see you better or i want to sniff you better okay okay makes sense, makes sense to me wow let's me see where is the other picture i will zoom out here see the other picture uh we don't have other, some picture are missing and you have some of the picture or some you, of the, yeah. If you, go, if you scroll down a little bit further, you will see something looks like a video picture. A video picture? Yeah, uh, you're looking at the front legs. So you're going to scroll down past the face combo and ears head combo. Yeah, further down, scroll, scroll, scroll. <coughs> More scrolling. Let's see. Yep, we're almost there. Uh, that picture. Okay. So you will see. I, I put some notes on it. Oh, like I see. Yeah. Notes, right? mm -hmm. So you will see a blue blue circle on the front, which are the, the front legs, and right. then you'll see the two red lines on right and left, which are the ears position, and then you also see the body language in yellow. Okay. And yeah. the angle of the dog is turning his head towards the person and the direction, which is green. So you see that is a whole conversation. I feel unsure what you're about to do. Mm -hmm. I am questioning the situation, but I am intimidated by your posture would mm -hmm. be the expression. So we see these back legs are solid. Mm -hmm. They're, they are not stretch they're kind of grounded the front legs one the first one is lifted showing the expression of kind of like i'm not feeling sure about the situation going forward and then the ears are down they are not perked up and they are not back either he's right. questioning the situation but the intention is straight so the dog is facing the person 
on a straight line, which means he wants to interact, but not sure how to take that situation, right? The person, what he does, basically offering a treat. Now, here's the story behind that. That is a street dog, a free roaming street dog from a third world country. And he was rescued in a war zone and brought to US. So this is actually one of the first weeks that dog is in a household, trying to trust, establish trust relationship with people. That's how it looked like. Wow. Incredible story. Okay, what are we going next on this? Are we going back up on your white paper? Uh, we can go further down. Further down, want. okay. The belly up. So I have two different versions of belly up. Okay. If you scroll down. Okay, I think I'm coming down here. <laughs> yeah, these two guys. These two guys are brothers. And story, the, the doctor got one dog, and then she found out there is another dog out there, and she, she adopted the second brother back into the family. Wow. And they, they did not get along well because they had lack of communication skills. They grew up in different homes. Uh, and I so see. their communication skills were a problem. But you see the body posture and expression genetically are the same. <laughs> Very similar, yes and pay the same attention. So we'll go a little bit down, a little bit more. Yep. Then we want to stop. You see a dog upside down. No, no sexual explicit here. Here you go. Okay, lay flat down. That, that's the one you want? Yeah. So we see here laying flat on the back with the front legs lifted. Uh, on the back of her grip, all these have different expression. So in that case, the dog is very comfortable kind of stretching his back. His tail is not in between the legs. Uh -huh. So it's not a fear response. Okay? Yeah. So his limbs are soft. He's relaxed. The tail is relaxed. The eyes are soft. No leaking. I'm all yours. I see. Expression. Mm -hmm. However, if we approach a dog, who goes belly up, his tail is wagging very short in between his legs. That is a reason for us not to approach further because that dog feels unsafe of his body and his body position is to keep him safe, is a warning, is a fear mm. signal. Yeah. And many dogs who have you know, an abusive past, even from previous homes, and we come home and they Kind of cower down, fall over to the place, and actually urinate themselves. That's a PTSD response, and we should not encourage that because here's what's happening: if we encourage a certain body language, we tell the dog we want that, we want you feel this way. So if a dog shows a submissive behavior with like that, but the tail in wagging, mm -hmm. and showing eventually the teeth out of fear, then I would say. Don't encourage that. Walk away from there, sending the dog a clear message. I don't want you like this. And mm -hmm. I'm not pretending to be somebody I'm not. So mm -hmm. I'm walking away from the situation, releasing you from that emotional pressure. Okay. Let's see what we have next. Fit with. So a good combination if you go further down, so we see more the combined pictures. When we go down, so for example, we see that dog, the white dog here, who has a combination of things. Yeah, he has his head down, his tail is not in between his legs, but he's not happy either. And we see similar to the previous combination going up. Mm -hmm. Remember the other dog who had right, right. this. Yeah. It is the same approach, the same idea. Now, this direction is towards another person, another dog, and the dog tries to avoid it. Okay. I would definitely say this dog is a free roaming dog eventually, and he wants to go closer to people, but not sure what to trust it. He's showing a displacement behavior. I'm not sure about that, so I'm showing you that I would rather go away, but I really want. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's kind of like an insecure picture. 
He said, I'll do it, but I'll I'll be very careful. Yeah, but we see also the hairs up on the front. Yeah, I see that here yeah. in this so area. So that's also a signal showing the dog that there is a territorial issue coming in. Yeah. So um, the dog's fear is and, and confidence is stored in two different places. The fear response is more stored on the back, yeah. and the confidence is more stored on the front. Right. So, so the, dog, go ahead. The fact that the the, be, the back legs are bended is that a sign that is is ready to jump or ready to from that perspective he's most likely to leave towards the right side of this okay okay so he's planning already an escape route in his okay. mind okay okay so the, yeah the left the left front leg will push him to the right it will do that right. and, and the go. back legs are proportion while the front legs are the steering wheel okay that's amazing Sorry for the blue. So the next one is below. We have more. I think we are almost at the end of the document here. Ah, yeah. arrows, color, and numbers. That's a lot of information. <laughs> OK, let's see. Yeah. So we see that the dog's tail. Oh, hold on. Is... I want to make the, I don't know where my cursor is. It's here. I try to make this. Uh, Okay, so I'm what? sorry for the picture. For some reason, they are misplaced. I kind of put them back in place. Okay. Now we see um, the dog who I'm about to put the leash on. It's the same dog that I showed you before. After treatment, so we see that the dog already is wagging his tail in both directions, right and left, full pace, right, expressing mm -hmm. himself, happy to put the leash on. But I approached because he gave me permission to do that. So I didn't invade his face. I see. Mm -hmm. He still told me that he's happy to do that. Now, right. in our, next to the picture, we see three dogs. And I sent you a link with a video, if you are interested to show that with our audience, um, showing how three dogs will interact with each other. And I would like the audience to find out which dog their idea is to be the bully and who is the one who is the victim. Now, in the third picture in here, you see a dog looking downwards. Let me mm -hmm. see if I can move the picture here for you guys. No, I cannot. Um, you see the dog in the shelter? Um, he's totally shut down. He's facing the wall. That dog is not in a good place. That is emotionally helplessness. Looks like this. Mm -hmm. so that dog is shut down, feeling helpless. Just try to keep his head out of water. That's how it looks like. Okay. Okay. Not a good situation having a dog like that in a shelter. He's looking away. He's basically facing a wall. Basically, he's facing a wall. That's all he wants to deal with. The wall. That's it. That's all. Too he much. To interact with people or other other dog. Yeah. yeah. I. It took me about one and a half hours to actually get that dog to do something other than that. Wow. You have to be very patient. Yeah. I, I was, he could turn, that dog could turn around at any time and bite. So it was a very, deadly, I think I have a video of that. Uh, I haven't posted it yet, but um, I, there's a video footage behind that. Okay, we have uh, another side by side here. Right. Do you remember the left leak, the left leg leak lifting? The left, oh, sorry. Yeah, the left leg lifting. Yeah. Now, we have breed traits that want the dog to lift the leg, showing a displacement behavior. The pointer, remember the pointer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who is pointing at the problem, right. telling you, hey, I see the problem down there. I'm not daring to move. It's right there. And I lift my leg so you can see I have the discomfort about the situation. Mm -hmm. So that emotional state is where basically breeders captured for the dog to show where the problem is. It's right there in front of me and I'm not giving another move. I'm freezing in that position. So the hunter knows where to shoot. So is the dog waiting for the handler to say something or do something? In that case, the dog shows a displacement behavior. Right. But it's also a breed trait. Make mm -hmm. sense? So the dog has a problem that he's facing and that is coming up at that body language but also his from a street perspective mm -hmm. he's a mixed breed shows that as well 
Now yeah. the other dog who's playing a playboy, yeah. playboy is another story, there are three versions of it. The playboy to invite for a game, the playboy to diffuse a situation, and the playboy to pretend to not escalate the situation. Okay. So the one on the left is ready to uh, rumble, have fun. Is that what you're saying for the one on the left? Uh, the one on the left is about to play. So in that yeah. case, that displacement, that uh, displacement, I'm sorry, my, my, my uh, body okay. posture is invitation to go have fun with a leash. Let's play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what's the next one? I would say we should look at the video if you want. I put it in the private chat so you can copy paste that oh, yeah. there. Okay, let me get yeah. that. Uh, private chat. Does anyone have any questions? Of course. Okay, let me see. Comment. We have Warren Dale. Hi, good morning, guys. Good, good morning, Warren. So uh, you want to unshare yeah. and then um, open up a new window with a YouTube. Yeah, I'm video. doing that right now. Body language so, tube. If mm. anyone has any questions, um, please welcome to share or share a picture asking questions. What do you think my dog is trying to tell me here? Just a picture, a snapshot, or even a video. Okay. And I'm happy, happy to do that translation kind of sort of. Okay. Well, I'll show you the page, the link you just sent me. Share the screen will be a Chrome tab. And it's... Uh, um, where is this thing? It's not showing me the link I just put there. Oh, sorry, body language. This is the link. Yep. So the link looks like this. No, not no. You, is there a video yeah. you want to play there? Yeah, click on the link that has the video next to it. Copy the link on the video. Let me see if I can do that. I'm trying to, and is that the link make body language your spur power or? No, copy no. the link and paste it into the browser. Okay, you're sending me a new link. Are yeah. you? Okay. Yeah, I'm sending you a new link. Okay, here's a new link. Yeah, just copy that in the browser. I'm going to do that like right away. Here we are. Do you see the video? Yep, exactly. Now, question to the audience: Who is the and who is the victim? Oops. <laughs> and of course, and of course, subscribe. Hold on a second. This is from you. Is that one of your? Yeah. Very, your is one of your that, production? That that small video here with the boogie Frenchie. That's my video. Yeah. Okay. The white guy. So, yeah, so the Frenchie is um, the bully who tries to block the brown dog for entering. That's not mine, so. No, I'll just stop. However, that's the Chinook dog, the same breed that we use too. Okay. So what happens is that the, the white dog, the smaller dog, she is blocking, physically blocking the dog from mm -hmm. going in the same direction. Then the Schnook dog trying to avoid that going to the other direction and the French is going back and blocks him as well. Right. So in this basically three seconds, or I don't remember, like maybe five seconds video, that could escalate to a dog fight. Mm -hmm. And the bulldog basically intervened into that situation, becoming friends with the Frenchie, helping him up with the job. He wasn't invited, he stepped in. Okay. But he took sides. He took sides with his friend. He didn't yeah, take yeah. sides with the victim. Mm -hmm. So if we have three dogs in the, in the yard playing and we don't see that, it can escalate to a dog fight. 
if the dog is not so smart as the brown dog was, trying to avoid the situation at any cost. Roman, that yes. was uh, outstanding again. I wish you, uh, I wish to have this white paper published sometime, make available to the public. Um, I don't want to reveal any secrets, so don't tell anybody that you're working on two books. So no, no <laughs> that. And uh, but this white paper by itself is a is a gold mine of information and cues and uh, help to understand the language of the dog. Uh, for our audience, we were supposed to have a guest today. Uh, she will be with us next week. Her name is Judy Jelms. She's a speech therapist. She worked with dogs as a speech therapist. She, okay. I will clarify what I just said. She worked with children. She's a speech therapist for children with speech impairment. She used dog as an assistant. She used sign language and the dog react to sign language. And she will share that experience with us next week. And uh, we're going to say, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Roman. This is a, a beautiful piece of uh, in information uh, out of the, that white paper. There's a possibility of doing a, a, a documentary. Is possibility to do a book. There's a lot of content in the very small format. This document is like 21 page, and there's enough doc information there for a, a two-hour documentary minimum, and a 300-page books. So. <laughs> Thank you for uh, your contribution. It's always a pleasure and a joy working with you. Kathy, get your place clean. We want to have you next week. Okay? And on that, the, thank you, everybody. Subscribe, share the news, share the information with other people. Um, see you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.